Welcome back to Real Cast Fishing. Your host, Glenn, with the City of Valley Fishing Field Team. And this round, what have we got for you? Well, we're back to the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing, specifically tips 66 through 70, where yours truly is going to read through each tip, discuss a little bit about it, and then we'll shift over to some other things. Um, potentially, well, a certain fish that I caught, well, just earlier today. Anyhow. Let's go ahead and right into the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing, tip 66. Ready, set, go. To avoid needlessly spooking fish, make all your tackle preparation before you move into position to cast. That way you'll spend less time in a place where you're likely to be seen, particularly by trout that might be moving about. By remaining a few yards from the point of attack, you're also more likely to observe feeding fish. Okay, let me just shift to the next, uh, oh, isn't it going? Okay, we got a little technical difficulty, uh, bear with me as, uh, we shift to the next page here. It's just lagging, it seems, so, um, oh, there it is. All right, so let me go back and forth on this one. By remaining a few yards away from the point of attack, you're also more likely to observe a feeding fish. <clears throat> okay. Or some other indication of where best to begin. So let's think about this one. Ready, set, go. And avoid needlessly spooking fish. Make all your tackle preparation. So get all your stuff ready. And then once you uh, are there, spend less time moving about and having your stuff ready to go. And stay a few yards away from where you're trying to get, in this case, the particular fish. And hey, uh, some of the things I typically do when I'm, I'm fishing, let's say a pond and whatnot, is I'll step away 10 to 15 feet away from the bank so I don't spook anything. That goes with fly fishing. That goes with just um, fishing in general. So keep that in your back pocket, all right? Okay, let's go to tip 67. <coughs> Excuse me. Dress for success. Drab clothing that blends well with the background is important when approaching trout. Greens in forests or tall grass, tans and browns when the backdrop turns dull. Avoid contrasting colors such as white, yellow, or red. Wherever you choose, it also helps to keep a low profile when making a close approach. Signed, C.M. All right, so dress for success also makes sense. Just kind of keep the background and fading into the background or or blending in so you don't spook the trout because hey uh had a many a time where a particular fish or two kind of gets a well senses that you're there just by be it a silhouette or whatnot and and then they spook and there you just blown your chance at a particular fish and in this case dress for success tip 67 all right let's go to 68 Watch that line. When nymphing without an indicator, concentrate on the visible bit of line or leader that is farthest away. The last thing you can see down in the water. This object should become your strike guide. The thing that provides the quickest indication that a fish may have taken the fly. If that spot on the line stops moving or moves in any way contrary to the drift, set the hook. Okay. A, uh, that's another one where I'll tend to take a look and look at that end of my line, see where it's closest to the water, and I'm watching for that indication. It's sort of like line watching when you're be it bass fishing with some high vis line, in this case, fly fishing with some line, high vis line as well. Being able to see that strike or that indication, it always helps to see that. In particular, Wear those polarized glasses that also help you identify any movement or slight indication of that line. Okay, let's go on to 69. When shorter is better. With a sinking line, shorten the leader to about three feet. The whole purpose of using a sinking line is to get the fly deep. A long leader causes the fly to ride up out of the zone or at least take a long time getting there. You'll seldom spook trout. To quote Lefty Cray, fish don't swim up your line to see how long your leader is. All right, when shorter is better. So this is the case of the sinking line, shorter leader to about three feet. And that purpose of the sinking line is get the fly deep. One thing that I remember um, noting from some 
other, um, I guess, tips that I picked up from some other folks is, uh, so you're using sinking line, having a longer leader. What will happen is, is you'll get a bend in the line and you're actually not sinking or you're not fishing as deep as you normally would. And that's another reason why you'd have that shorter is better leader in the case of working a sinking line. All right, let's see. Let's go to tip 70. Don't be a slacker. When casting upstream, slack in the line, the fly line as it drifts back toward the angler became becomes an enemy on two accounts. It catches current, accelerating the natural drift of the fly, and it creates a time lag when setting the hook, causing missed strikes. Successful anglers take pains to retrieve loose line, but never so fast as to advance the, lo- the fly. To take up slack, quickly pin the line beneath the index finger, holding the rod grip. Grasp the line behind the finger and strip briskly to recover the slack before it accumulates. All right, that was tip 70. Don't be a slacker. So basically, you, you want to make sure you have a tight line or at least no slack in the line so you're able to set the hook fairly quickly. And... Well, uh, hopefully you're able to uh, keep that slack out of line and gives you more an opportunity to catch that fish or at least hook that fish. <coughs> All right. Excuse me. Okay. So that was tip 66 through 70 of the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing. And like I was saying, uh, this time I kind of want to show you a particular fish that I caught earlier uh, today. And let me go take you there real quick. So let me let me set the story here. Um, first, uh, I went fishing at our local pond over there at the uh, city, just a little bit south of here. In fact, it's over there by South Fork, like in the television show Dallas from way back when. Uh, same place where they used to film the South Fork Ranch. Well, further down there is the pond by the city hall of the city of Murphy. And in there... Uh, they had stocked it with trout last week, had a derby and everything. I ended up limiting out. It was the third limited trout that I had uh, caught in 2024 so far this year. And I was hoping to get a chance to get out there again. But as it turns out, the bite was slow with trout. But I do recall that this time of year, the bass tend to lurk in the shallows. In some cases, already building up their beds. And, well... Let me show you the video, and we can maybe talk more about it. Okay, so here I am. Um, let me see if I can reset this here, right here. Okay, so I am sitting here. I had just hooked on to uh, a little, well, a fish, and I was using a trout magnet. Been fighting them for about oh two three minutes. I only got two pound test line, and uh, what's cool is I'm using that bait finesse style gear. I'm casting bait casting style, a trout magnet, so a one gram uh, lure, and this bass took it, and I ended up uh, well landing him successfully. Look at this guy, uh, pretty nice, huh? <laughs> so I'll get a video out on this, give you more details as to what I was using there. But bottom line, I was using a trout magnet, one gram, uh, cast with this Kingfisher, Feather Flight Kingfisher Bait Finesse Reel. And, well, it just goes to show you that you can catch some pretty nice-sized fish on a trout magnet. All right. So that said, I appreciate y'all joining today. This is going to be a short one, mainly because the uh, chapters or the uh uh, the five tips this round were, well, uh, not as long as normal. So uh, all for now on the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing. And it looks like we got some folks that are joining late here. Um, let me just see if anyone has any comments and whatnot. Uh, nope, I don't see anything. All right, let's just make one quick check. Okay, yeah, we're good. All right. Um, so I'll get another video out, uh, talking about this particular fish that yours truly caught. 
All right, I'm going to just show it again because, hey, this was a fun one. This is probably the biggest bass I caught so far in 2024. Caught several other ones playing around in the area. Uh, but, yeah, I've been, I've been pretty happy with this. So um, stay tuned. This is uh, just showing you what can be done. Ultralight bait casting with a bait finesse system style uh, technique. Two pound test trout magnet mono line. Fishing a trout magnet one gram. Working this guy, and I was able to catch him. All right. Not bad. All right. Okay. Uh, stay tuned for more on this video. But for now, all for now.